short and sweet. Let me talk a little bit about electric cars. I've been driving a purely electric car for over two years now with more than 40,000 kilometers. Since I live in a big city, I have no private charging port in front of the house. I depend on public charging ports. The standard question I get from people who drive cars with combustion engines is what is the range of your electric car? Some asked how long does charging take? None of them ever asked me about the comfort of driving it. First of all, the comfort of driving an EV, an electric vehicle, is just amazing. Why? Because EVs have no gearbox. A combustion engine needs a gearbox in order to transport the energy from the motor to the wheels at different speeds. The gearbox consists of hundreds if not thousands of parts, mainly cogwheels. It is big, heavy and complex. The electric car has basically only one cogwheel and no gearbox at all. There's another great difference. The combustion engine is complex and the electric engine is simple. Both types of engines are no rocket science. They've been around basically for over 100 years. The combustion engine took over because of its energy container, the car tank, storing dozens of liters of petrol or diesel. Batteries were much too weak to carry a vehicle from A to B. Until the lithium battery came along. Our car has a lithium battery which stores enough energy to carry the 1.5 tons of weight over a distance of more than 300 kilometers. It is heavy, 400 kilograms. More expensive cars have bigger batteries and provide a range of over 500 kilometers. These numbers will increase in the next few years. We're in late 2024 now. In Europe, we have two main types of connections for charging the battery. One is pretty small and called Type 2. It provides a loading power of up to 22 kilowatt hours. What does 22 kilowatt hours mean? Well, our car has a battery which can store up to 60 kilowatt of energy. So with 22 kilowatt hours, it takes about three hours for a full charge. 22 times 3 equals 66, which is a little bit more than our battery can store. When you charge at home, ideally with the electricity from your solar paneled roof, you charge your car slower with 11 or 9 kilowatt hours. Full charge in 6 hours or so. You have to use your own cable for the Type 2 charge. You can even use your home outlet for charging the car, but in this case you need a special cable. It limits the power flowing through the plugs and the cable. The second type of charging connection in Europe is called CCS. The CCS cables are attached to the charging station. You cannot remove them from there. They are not very long and pretty heavy. They contain sensors for the temperature and they have a coolant to manage the heat of the strong current. With CCS you can fully charge your car in 10 to well, say 30 minutes. It depends on several factors that, such as temperature and the brand of the car with its specific power management. Apart from the strength of the current, there's a major difference between Type 2 and CCS. Type 2 charges with AC, that is alternating current, which needs to be converted into DC, direct current, in the car. CCS, on the other hand, charges with DC and there's no conversion needed. You quickly learn things about electric charging. For example, when you attach your car to a CCS charger and your car's battery is pretty full, say 70%, then charging the car up to 90%, that is plus 20%, takes much longer than charging from 10 to 30%, which is all. So 20%. The reason is that the lithium batteries are delicate and it's them to decide about the speed of charge, not you. 
What you also learn is that you should not charge your battery over 80% unless you drive off pretty soon after. And parking the car for a couple of days with less than 20% charge is also not so good for the life cycle of the battery. When driving the car you have the option of regenerative braking called recuperation when slowing down, for example when approaching a traffic light. I use this all the time. A side effect is that the brakes accumulate rust. They are not being used very often in an electric car. An EV rarely needs new brakes and the acceleration is just wonderful and driving very slowly is also great with electric cars. You need that in an urban environment all the time, driving slowly. The car manufacturers seem to enjoy building EVs. They need much less space for the engine. The battery is placed comfortably below the passenger seats. There's no shift gear unit, no exhaust. EVs usually have bigger wheels than combustion cars and a lower center of gravity due to the heavy battery that makes driving generally safer. There's a lot of talk about the rare metals used in the batteries of EVs. Lots of energy and work is needed in order to get lithium and cobalt out of the ground. But the total energy balance is still good. Plus, the electric engine converts almost all energy into motion, whereas you need a lot of petrol or diesel to move a car. The combustion produces a lot of heat, which cannot be used for powering the wheels. The energy efficiency of an EV is high, well, around 80%. And of course, an EV does not emit any carbon dioxide, zero CO2. Finally, a word about the cost of charging. With petrol or diesel, there's not much discussion. The prices are pretty stable. With electricity, there's a lot of discussion. You can use a charging station at the Autobahn, where you pay 10 euros for a charge, or 20 euros for the same charge at the same station. It depends on the charging card or app. For example, here I would pay 89 cents per kilowatt. Much too much. With a roaming provider, I can use the same charger for half the price. That's why EV drivers have several RFID cards in their pockets. And we need to always be aware of drastic price changes and check out subscription offers, etc. All in all, driving an electric car is lovely. A 600 km ride with one or two charges in between is no problem at all, since I don't want to drive 600 km non-stop anyway. Often we charge the car somewhere and while it charges for, say, 25 minutes, we get something to eat or explore the countryside. We usually return to the car later than after 25 minutes. Folks, have a good day. Thank <laughs> you.